Welcome to the special broadcast on the parliamentary elections of DD India, the great Indian election. This is the ultimate election year as globally more voters than ever in the history will head to the polls. On the show today, we take a look at why Chhattisgarh matters in the 2024 elections. Well, Chhattisgarh in central India was formed out of Madhya Pradesh to become uh, India's 26th state. It is also known as the Rice Bowl of India. The Hindi heartland is India's 10th largest state and a major producer of energy and steel. Let us understand why Chhattisgarh matters as India decides in 2024. <music> Chhattisgarh, the landlocked state in central India, is known for its lush green stretches of forest covers, breathtaking natural beauty, diverse tribal heritage and rich mineral deposits. Home to people from 42 different tribes, the cultural life of Chhattisgarh comprises varied forms of traditional art and crafts. Tribal dances, folk songs, regional festivals and fairs and amusing cultural fests. In fact, Chhattisgarh's Dhokra art, inspired by tribal themes of animals, mythical creatures, human creatures, natural shapes, etc., is now quite popular beyond the borders of India. Spreads over 135,000 square kilometers, the state is also known as the bowl of rice as the region grows over 20,000 varieties of rice. Chhattisgarh shares its borders with seven Indian states. Originally a part of Madhya Pradesh, it was carved out and granted statehood on November 1st, 2000 with Raipur as its designated state capital. With 11 seats in the Lok Sabha or the lower house of the Indian Parliament, Chhattisgarh is going to the general elections in three phases between April 19th to May 7th. The state's 20.5 million registered voters are ready to exercise their electoral duty. Out of the total number of voters, 10.1 million are male, while about 10.3 million are female. About 732 voters are from the third gender category. The state is currently governed by the Bharatiya Janata Party, which backed a majority support in the state elections held in December 2023. The major parties in the state are the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Indian National Congress. The other political parties which have been contesting in the state as well as national elections here are the Janata Congress Chhattisgarh, Gondwana Ganatantra Party and the Bahujan Samaj Party. In the 2019 general elections, the Bharatiya Janata Party won nine seats with a vote share of 51.40% and the Indian National Congress bagged two seats. In the backdrop of a dramatic comeback in recently held state elections by the BJP, all eyes are keenly looking forward to the general election contest when arch-rival Congress and BJP once again lock horns in a two-party fight. Antra Sinha for DD India. Well, another Hindi heartland is ready to go to the polls in the first three phases of elections. But an interesting battle here. It's another bipolar contest that you would see in this Hindi heartland or the rice bowl of India. That's Chhattisgarh. Let's quickly take a look at Chhattisgarh, how it goes to polls, which are the regions which come in phase one, two, and three in this particular election. Phase one, there's just one seat, the seat of Bastar down here, that goes to the polls. Phase two, you've got three seats. Phase three, that's the phase in May. That's when the maximum number of seats from Chhattisgarh go to polls. A quick look at the numbers there. Phase one, just one seat. Phase two, you've got three. Phase three, Maximum number seven seats, which go to polls on the May, on the seventh of May. A quick look at numbers on how elections across the last two decade or uh, across the last one decade, 2014 and 19, BJP managed to win nine. BJP went to ten. The Congress from two, coming down to half. That's just one seat in another Hindi heartland state. Percentage-wise, much above the national average. 67 percent was what we noted in 2019. Chhattisgarh irrespective of all that, you know, all the trouble that it faced has managed to stay above that national average of 67, 71%, a similar margin, a similar voting pattern that you would see even in the assembly elections. The assembly elections, BJP from 15 in 2018, 
managed to wrestle back power from uh, Bhupesh Bhagel, winning 54 seats and getting a majority here to put another BJP government there in Chhattisgarh along with Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh in the assembly elections. That's not all. The percentage, as we, as we looked, about 70%, 76% both in the assembly elections in 2018 as well as 2023. A quick look at that lone seat that goes to polls here in Chhattisgarh, that's Bastar. You've got Mahesh Kashyap, a new face, uh, back in the election fray, this time uh, contesting uh, from Bastar. And you've got Kasava Lakma from the Congress and BSP completing the three-party race. But generally, Chhattisgarh, as we always have seen, is just a bipolar contest. It's between two national parties, the Congress and the BJP, that go neck to neck in this battle for glory, especially in Lok Sabha as well as in Pal as well as in assembly elections. You know, there has been a false narrative that's been built time and again about the fairness of Indian elections. We've sent a team down to Bastar to get you the real story on how elections are held in a free and fair manner in India. Take a look. We are here in Dantewada of Bastar, which goes to polls on April 19. Bastar is the highest Naxal infested area in the country. Like previous elections, Naxals have issued posters, appeals and press statements asking the people to boycott the electoral process. Many of these posters have been cited in the last two weeks. But the common voters of Bastar, especially those residing in the most interior, inaccessible areas, are having none of it. A massive crackdown against Naxals was initiated by the security forces in January this year. As per security data, more than 50 Naxals have been neutralized since January 2024. More than 200 have been nabbed. Not just that, around 200 odd Naxals have surrendered this year alone and at least 167 of them have joined the state police. कई माओवादी कैडर जो माओवादियों के कस्टडी चला है जो इंसात्मक और एक विकास विरोधी चला है उसको देखकर जान लिया पहचान लिया उसके पश्चात इंसात त्याग करके समाज के मुख्य धारा में शामिल होने के लिए उद्देश्य से आत्मसमर्पण भी किया इस प्रकार माओवादियों का भी काफी बैकफुट में है। While it is easy to denigrate India's democracy sitting in think tanks abroad, it is the resilience and commitment of the Indian voter which keeps the world's largest democracy alive and kicking. Here, the men, women. All voters have made up their mind to defy not only geographical challenges but the threat to their lives because they believe in exercising their franchise. Perhaps those creating an anti-democracy narrative would like to come here and see things for themselves. In Dantewada, Chhattisgarh, with Somesh Patel, Smita Mishra. Well, that's how a false narrative being built and a correspondent there on the ground getting us the real picture. Three big questions that we look forward to answers from our guests joining us this evening. First, will insurgency and naxalism, issues related to that, be at the forefront in this 2024 campaign? Second, empowerment versus entitlement battle. What will resonate with the people? A final has the opposition challenge in, or has the opposition's challenge increased in the Hindi heartland? You know, three questions that we're looking for answers. Two eminent guests joining us this evening. We've got Praful Ketkar in the studios, always with us, helping us navigate through elections. Joining us once again, we've got R. Krishna Das, senior journalist, joining us from Raipur to take the deliberations forward. Let me first come to you, Praful. Today, we got... we. A short while ago, heard the news about how Naxals have once again been neutralized, especially in Kankere region. Do you see this playing out? And with all the threat that Naxals had given and the story that we filed on people ready to go out and cast their vote, be a big difference? Oh, absolutely. Chhattisgarh and ch common masses of Chhattisgarh, especially the tribal region, have shown defiance against the Maoist terror. True. 
And we have seen that consecutively in elections. And the remarkable part is, you know, in the last six months, um, there is a campaign that is going on uh, on behalf of Chhattisgarh government and the Home Ministry at the center, uh, where uh, the the it is it is uh, in in a local language, but in English it is called homecoming. Mm. So there are many uh, you who were forced to join the Maoist cadre are actually coming back, okay. and that is giving the confidence. We have seen that in the assembly election also, uh, especially in the uh, 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 Sarguja region. Mm. And I'm sure in this election also uh, is is going to be the uh, you know a, a above average voting percentage in Chhattisgarh. Mm. One interesting thing that I would like to highlight, uh, Anil, about uh, Chhattisgarh is in Chhattisgarh last uh, uh, not this one the earlier uh, 2018 assembly elections, Congress had won 67 seats in assembly polls. True. When it comes to the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, BJP actually improved the tally to 10. And okay. if we convert that into the assembly segments, mm -hmm. it comes down to 66, 67. True. So, the, you know, people who say, oh, these are, you know, the tribal backward regions and they are, they don't know. Boss, these same people have voted differently in assembly elections and Lok Sabha elections and almost equal number of seats in opposite direction. Sure. So they know whom they are voting for at the uh, assembly level and the Lok Sabha level. We should okay. keep this in mind. Okay, Mr. Krishna Das, you know, this is that lone seat that the Congress managed to hold on to in 2019. How's the going there on the ground? You know, you would have a better sense on how the two political parties are gearing up. And how do the people of Bastar, especially, you know, we are three days away from the first phase of voting. How do you see this region and the political battle they're heating up? No, given the assembly election results, uh, the BJP is optimistic it is going to um, break that trend right now. Oh. The last in the last Lok Sabha election, the Congress uh, was in a position to um, retain that seat. But uh, I think the assembly election has given... Uh, trend and uh, that trend is now available in the public domain also. The sorry part, Anil, of Congress party is that ki they are yet to recover from the debacle that they have faced in the assembly election. So right now in Bastar, you see there is a um, clear case of groupism that is simmering uh, in open uh, in Bastar. So that Congress is going to uh, face a little challenge from their uh, uh, internal groupism also. So that would be one of the factors that is going to uh, affect the prospect of Congress in Bastar. As far as the voting pattern is concerned, the assembly election has once again, as I have told you, the assembly election has given a crystal clear mandate. The people are now ready to participate in the process of democracy in a full-fledged way. And uh, since the movement of security forces are also uh, at high in most of the interior places also, and if you can recall, uh, we have now set up a camp. Uh, security forces have their own uh, movement in all these interior areas. So uh, since the uh, security blanket has been opened in uh, interior areas and uh, people are now um, uh, fearless, so that way they can come out and they will vote in a large number. So, in that way, we are hopeful if the voting pattern increases in uh, Bastar, naturally BJP will have an edge in this election. Okay. Praful, when, uh, you know, when one sees the manifestos that all parties have realized, though there is an opposition block, but somewhere deep down, do you get the sense that the, ba the battle of manifestos, as I may say, you know, on one end, you have something that's talking about entitlements, to the other end, you've got a manifesto or a sankal patra that talks about empowerment and that's a big difference that would play in the minds of the voters that is uh, certainly one aspect because you know pe people ultimately are going to judge uh, not just on the basis of manifestos but also the track records mm -hmm. you know when it comes to the delivery of of whatever you have promised it looks like you know what what congress has promised is uh, you know beyond the capacity you know uh, to deliver on the other hand Prime Minister Modi, when he is talking about Modi ki guarantee, he is carrying the face and the track record of last 10 years. And True. when it comes to the tribal regions, 
uh, one in terms of delivery and two at the, in terms of the future uh, because 2025 uh, bjp is talking about you know having a mega uh, uh, celebration about uh, this entire janajati gaurav thing and 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 that has you know caught up the imagination of common common uh, tribal people mm. when it comes to the delivery of houses delivery of uh, uh, gas connections and even the road connectivity see chhattisgarh uh, traditionally uh, was kept out of all uh, infrastructural development thanks to the maoist violence and intervention hmm. uh, now somehow bjp has uh, one because of the uh, approach the, the 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 cohesive approach to deal with this not just as a you know a simple law and order problem but but it is a massive security threat mm. and and uh, somehow bjp has has been able to develop a narrative of mao is being anti tribal okay. and 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 that is why we are seeing this you know the support and the homecoming that i told uh, you about uh, where where there are many maoist who are surrendering and coming back mm. so uh, the and and it has happened of course in the sarguja region to a larger extent mm. bastar region Uh, 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 he is absolutely right, Krishna ji. If if, if uh, we see anywhere around seventy percent voting percentage, see uh, traditionally, if you see whether two thousand fourteen, two thousand nine, or even two thousand nineteen, uh, uh, Bastar and Korba, these two constituencies, constitu uh, Congress had uh, you know somehow uh, their kept base. their voting percentage mm. on hold. But at the same time, we should keep in mind that in relation to or comparison to the other constituencies the voting percentage also uh, goes down in these constituencies now as you have seen uh, you, you have shown in the report if the if the if the voters are fearless if the security arrangements are in place and today as we have got the reports that after killing of two uh, innocent tribals by the maoist 18 tribals or 29 Nakaim. tribals are neutralized by the security Nakaim forces have been uh, 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 sorry uh, uh, maoist uh, uh, are are uh, 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 neutralized by the security forces, then it's a good sign. It means that uh, uh, the people will be confident about the security arrangements. And if the voting percentage somewhere touches around 68 to 70 percent, then then we can we can see a turn around even in Bastar. Mr. Krishna Das, you know the infrastructure push that is being taken, you know, on a very large scale. Do you see it having you know greater footprints? Amongst the people, amongst the voters of Chhattisgarh, especially naturally, in the naturally, I mean it's a major factor because you see there were no roads, there were no roads, uh, and because uh, since the road connectivity was uh, not in a good shape, so uh, that affected most of the other development works and also the social and welfare schemes uh, could not reach uh, or could not penetrate to the person standing last in the row. So that was a major factor and. Uh, now uh, anil you may be surprised the interior areas of bastar the children they have never seen train so now the movement of train has started in uh, bastar region to some extent this rao ghat and that area is now connected with the uh, railway so uh, a lot of development uh, activities is taking place in bastar region and people are now welcoming it because they haven't seen what actually the development meant so now they are uh, acquainted with all these issues so they are now uh, in a position to judge ki what is good and what is bad so they have been kept uh, totally isolated from all these um, issues so if some development is taking place it's a big uh, development because there was nothing in bastar region there was no road there was not even a um, murung roads uh, you can say so in that way if there is a small development taking place for the tribals it's a big development so that way it is certainly going to help bjp because it's only the bjp that has brought some kind of development in bastar region so i think uh, for the electoral uh, prospect bjp will be in a position to get a dividend out of it okay mr ketkar the opposition battle another hindi heartland another hindi heartland that they lost in november along with rajasthan uh chatisgarh madhya pradesh do you somewhere get the sense that the opposition is in a desperate mood and does not know what to do especially in the hindi heartland uh all over 
uh, there seems to be no clear cut uh, uh, strategy because they are talking about the one to one fight with BJP. Mm. But in this uh, region, like for example, if you take case of Chhattisgarh, there is Gonwana Gantantra Party or BSP, but they are so marginal, you know, 2%, 3%, 4% of vote share. Now, uh, what has happened? Like in case of Chhattisgarh, uh, Bhupesh Baghel and his government face a lot of allegations related to corruption. There is one liquor scam that is, you know, being investigated there as well. Uh, so, Cong within Congress, there is a strong opposition to Bhupesh Baghel himself. Mm. And that's why, they, that, that, uh, you know, the factionalism that uh, Krishnaji was talking about. On the other hand, BJP made a swift, you know, a kind of transition where Dr. Raman Singh has, is now settled as, as a speaker and, and, and a new uh, chief minister coming from Sarguja region where he has swept all the 14 seats for BJP. Mm. Uh, and and it, it looks very smooth uh, transition. And he has taken the hold of the administration quickly. So uh, there is a clear cut messaging when it comes to delivery. And there I think it makes the real difference. And that is why in Hindi heartland, the kind of messaging that you are doing is ideologically very, very confusing. You know, uh, uh, you, know you, you will be coming to this region, you will be talking about soft Hindutva, you will be talking about temples. The moment you go to south, you will be talking about Hindi imposition and uh, north-south divide. So, what, what kind of messaging you, because this is Lok Sabha election, come on, this mm -hmm. is not going to be just Tamil Nadu or the Karnataka or one state election. Mm -hmm. So, whatever message you are conveying, it has to be a coherent message. There BJP has been consistent when it comes to leadership, when it comes to uh, programs and when it comes to uh, the, the, the organizational machinery. Mm. Their opposition seems to be, you know, completely disjointed. Even they, they are talking about uh, in Bengal, you know, uh, there, there, is, there are constituencies where it is not just TMC and BJP. Even the left and the Congress have separate candidates. True. Where is the opposition unit? So you are on the one hand talking about the India Alliance, uh, the opposition unity, but there is no one coherent strategy as far as the electoral battle, battle is concerned. Where Congress is directly fighting with the BJP, there are around 25, uh, 250 seats and most of them are in the you know Hindi heartland. Uh, there, I think other parties are in no position to contribute and where the regional parties are dominant position. Hmm. Congress is almost, you know, irrelevant in terms of contribution. So, what kind of alliance that you are doing? Okay. That is the question for them. Okay, let me just get Krishna Das quickly. Uh, you know, Mr. Das, especially when it comes to, you know, contest between Congress and BJP, you know, 2019, if you see the seats that have seen a direct contest between the two, you know, BJP seems to be way, way ahead. Do you see this chasm that we've seen, you know, it becoming wider and wider? you know, five years later? Naturally, you see, BJP right now is in a better position. And uh, since I represent Chhattisgarh state, I would like to elaborate that Chhattisgarh is now a poster boy for the BJP as far as corruption is concerned. And uh, Modi ji and entire BJP oh. is now totally focusing on the uh, issue of corruption. And Anil, you may be aware that in India, in the Indian history, you see corruption has always been a major election issue until and unless it has been marketed well. Okay. Uh, right from A.R. Antule to V.P. Singh, you see uh, the Indian Watergate, uh, most of the population was not aware ki what exactly it meant. And uh, Bofors, I can claim ki not many could have spelled also what Bofors meant. So V.P. Singh uh, very well marketed it and uh, in that way uh, Congress has to um, face the consequences. So, BJP has marketed the Chhattisgarh corruption cases also in a big way. Okay. And uh, since uh, there were uh, elements um, that were um, supposed to um, come out of easily, you see, it was deep neck corruption in Chhattisgarh and there, there were subsequently um, ample evidences and the clear okay. cut evidences against the government, uh, maybe Congress government. So that way, I think BJP right now, they have picked up the issue that is going to give them a big, very big dividend. Okay, bridge dividends there in that Hindi heartland. You know, the great Indian election is your one-stop show on weekdays and all that matters in Indian elections 2024.
what could be the state that could form a part of our deep dive on Wednesday night. Countdown to the first phase of voting has begun. We track the states from the west, central and south of India in phase one of voting and how they matter as India decides. Join us as we look at the star candidates, state and all that matter this election season on the Great Indian Election at 8.30 p.m. IST and 1500 hours GMT only on DD India. Well, the Election Commission of India's Mai Bharat Hoon is a voter awareness song that encourages voters to participate in the mega exercise. Let's listen into this Chhattisgarhi version of the song. <laughs> Was trying to fix, squeeze in another question there, running out of time. Thank you both gentlemen, Praful Ketkar, Krishna Das for joining us, taking these deliberations forward. Appreciate you joining us this evening. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the Great Indian Election. You can connect with us on Facebook, X, Instagram. Good night, stay safe, take care.